Welcome. We are here once again. It's Saturday morning, and that means it's live from the heartland on Loyola University's Community Radio, WLUW 88.7 FM in Chicago. We are thrilled to be here on this uh, eh, as of yet gray and uh, chilly day, but uh, we welcome you to uh, listen in for the next hour, hear about community activities, uh, uh, politics, food systems, uh, revolution in America. These are all topics we will cover in the next hour. I am your host, Katie Hogan. We're here every week, as you know, live from the heartland, sitting on stage, smelling all the good smells, but not taking part until the show's over, at least on my behalf. Uh, later in the show, you're going to hear from Debbie Hillman. Uh, Annie Day of the Revolution newspaper will be here. And right now, I'm sitting across the table from my friend, former professor, and uh, I think political ally in most uh, ways that I can see, uh, Commissioner Mike Quigley. Morning. Hi, guy. How are you? Here you are, front runner in the 5th Congressional Special Election. Fortunately, just a few days left. Four days left. Yeah, a few days. Well, four specifically, yeah. right? Yes. And here you are in the 9th Congressional. Sorry, we'll, we'll only hold you for another half hour. I'm glad to be here, though. I'm really Booting glad you're to here. to allies who will uh, go down and, and work precincts for us today. Yes, and uh, what is, what is? give me just a, since you started, what's the picture that you would like to portray of your campaign, something that had to be put together like that? Yeah, I, I heard someone say that uh, this was their lifelong ambition uh, since um, Rom decided to go to D.C. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think most people imagine that this seat would be uh, Rom's seat because he had him ambitions to be Speaker of the House. Sure. So when he made the decision to become the President's Chief of Staff, there was a lot of scrambling. Um, and that, it was, took, that was exactly when? October? Um, oh, even a little later than that. Yeah, I, I think mean, so. I don't think, actually I think that it didn't start sinking in until Grant Park <clears throat> when we knew that the President would be the President. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just a few days after that. Mm -hmm. And then there were some other maybe, maybe he will, maybe he won't. So as a result, you've got a crowded field, and everyone had to throw a campaign together, a federal campaign together in a hurry, which is hard to do. You have to raise money a whole different way. What, what, uh, anything that us <coughs> neophytes or laymen need to know about that raising money a whole different way thing? Well, in, in Illinois, fundraising is the wild, wild west, as we have seen with the Blago uh, Countless craziness. Countless times. Yes, you can, times. you can take as big a check as you want. From, from anybody, anybody, no matter what they do. Ah, and, Illinois. Illinois. And uh, federal rules uh, have campaign limitations of $2,400 only from individuals, although PACs do play a role. Uh -huh. So it made a big difference in how quickly you could raise money, how fast you could get your operation in place. And, and of course, there's a crowded field. Very that, again, crowded. makes it very difficult to put an operation together. Right. We did a good job. So it's been... Uh, like a two-month campaign, a, a two, two months, and a half month campaign, a two-month sprint, sprint, is what they call, yeah. right? And um, what do you think will be the core of your support? First of all, the fifth congressional district. Let's describe it for folks out there. It goes from the lake front to like 294. 294. So right. the suburbs that you include are uh, the suburbs near O'Hare, like Elmwood Gosh, Park and Elmwood Franklin Park, Park uh, a Schiller few, Park. Yeah, a few others, but. Uh, only about 10% of those who vote will come from the suburbs. Mm -hmm. It is a district that, that stretches from Lincoln Park and Lakeview all the way to Portage Park. It is an extremely diverse district. It is uh, it, it is not like the 9th congressional, congressional district at all. It is a, a probably classified demographically as an older, more Catholic district. Yes. Um, but it is a real diverse area, and I think it's a challenge to run a campaign in that area, and it's a, it's a, it's a more unique challenge representing a diverse area like that. But if you're willing to work hard it, and work with everyone, it's uh, very doable. You're, um, you're also working in the uh, – do, do you have allies that are elected officials standing up in that area? Well, I mean, has uh, John Cullerton come out and supported uh, you or anything? President uh, of the Senate, Cullerton, has uh, – with two state reps in the race, and he wants to stay out of it. Right. But Commissioner Forrest Claypool is chairing my campaign. I chaired his race against uh, uh, John Stroger in 2006, mm -hmm. and I understand he's probably going to run again in 2010 for president. So that matters. Our two most important endorsements outside of that, in a crowded field, we still got the Chicago Tribune, 
and the Chicago Sun-Times to endorse us. Uh, when you think about the talent that's in this field, how mm -hmm. crowded it is, um, it is in a large way uh, a validation of what we've tried to do in the county for 10 years. Well, so that I don't forget that I, not everyone knows you as well as I do, which is a, a, a thing to fall, for me to fall into when I sit up here talking to someone who I took a, a class at Loyola from, much less uh, other connections we have. Um, what makes, what drives you to take on this job? What would you uh, see as your major um, uh, areas of uh, work mm -hmm. if you made the Congress? What would you be doing for your uh, voters in the 5th District? You know, there's one issue to me that transcends all the others, especially in the days of Blago Burris, and it's, it's transparency in government. Uh, I've been fighting for transparency and accountability for 10 years. A wise man once said the best disinfectant for government is illumination. Um, Who in, said that? I think it was Mr. Justice Brandeis. Okay. I like uh, that. I think in the end what, what it means is that people need to know what's going on. At the federal level, uh, one of the first things that President Obama talked about was the failure of the TARP package, the bank bailout package, and he said there was no transparency. Literally, Congressman Ackerman just recently was saying to folks, to the bankers, who got this money? Yeah. What did you do with it besides planes and flat screen TVs and, and hoarding and buying other banks? And it's eight a, shrugs. Well, yeah, eight shrugs. And then he, he acted like a substitute teacher. He said, all right, I want this in writing. I want it next week. Does anyone have a problem with that? Uh, at the local level, we fought for transparency and accountability. And we got property tax appeal system online. And the attorney of record had to be online. Uh, the TIF process in Chicago, where um, millions and millions of dollars are spent with very little accountability, that's been one of our uh, most difficult challenges and something I think we've had some great success you, here. You've done a good job of uh, so, tracking those down for us. So I, 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 if you care about health care, you care about education, you care about national defense and the environment, if a government is transparent and accountable, it is going to be more effective on that issue. And I, I just say that because walking the district, people are very concerned about their jobs and losing their health care benefits, but in the end, they're angry about Illinois being the laughingstock in politics. 